Hey photographer, if you love taking epic portraits in epic locations, that's great. But a lot of times epic locations require shooting in harsh light. And so I'm going to break down how you can actually shoot in epic locations with a really harsh light and still get a beautiful final product. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Caitlin. This is a place where we empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you see a little behind the scenes of our everyday life. What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to help you realize that there are actually several tips and several things to look out for when you're shooting in this har harsh light in epic locations that you can apply to these scenarios that will really help you be able to get a beautiful end result that you love without feeling super stressed out about it. So I'm going to, sh I'm going to teach you those tips and then I'm actually going to show you some behind the scenes of a real wedding day that I shot recently in Maroon Bells, which is a beautiful national park um, outside of Aspen, Colorado. We shot an elopement there, but we shot in really harsh light, middle of the day. I'm talking like 1 to 2 p.m. All their portraits were shot in harsh light. And so I'm going to show you how I handled that and how you can apply these same concepts um, and be able to tackle situations like this for yourself in the future. Okay, so before we dive into the tips, you kind of have to understand the pros and the cons of harsh light. So harsh light um, is pr normally a pretty negative thing if you're a natural light photographer. Um, it's negative because a lot of times harsh light uh, is harder to control. Uh, it provides uh, a lot of issues with shadows. So a lot of times people who are being photographed in harsh light without the tips that I'm going to share with you in a second, um, they have really harsh shadows on their faces. So normally a harsh shadow under their nose, their eye sockets are really dark. It's very unflattering. Um, another reason why harsh light uh, is not ideal, a con of harsh light, um, is the fact that it is so intense that a lot of times it can affect your color. It can make editing a nightmare. And so if you, if you really long for soft skin tones and beautiful, like evenly exposed images, you're not going to get that in harsh light unless you know how to control it. And a lot of times people who shoot in uneven harsh light, editing is just nearly impossible to get the look that you're ultimately going for. So those are the negatives, the cons of harsh light, but what are the pros? Are there any pros in situations where you're shooting in an epic location? So you have, maybe you have rolling hills or mountains in the background. Maybe, I mean, we shot a wedding in Lake Como, Italy on a boat in the middle of the afternoon, and we wanna be able to see that crystal clear, like teal water. We wanna be able to see that. So sometimes harsh light actually does work in our favor because when you have harsh light, but you also have an epic background. The truth is you have to be able to put your clients into that harsh light enough to compensate for how bright the background is so that you can expose for both of them. A lot of times people think like, oh, it's an epic background, but I need to put my clients in the shade because that's what I've learned. But in really epic scenarios, everything about what you've normally learned about managing harsh light kind of goes out the window. So I teach people all the time, you can shoot in harsh light. Here are ways you can adjust. Here's how you can, you can shoot wide open. Here's how you can make it look a little bit softer. And that's all true in most cases. But what about the epic cases, the epic locations? Those are the situations where you have to tweak um, the way that you view harsh light a little bit differently. So some things will still say the same, but overall, instead of trying to hide from the harsh light and diminish it, you actually have to use it to your advantage in order to capture the epicness of what's happening in the background behind your client. All right, so the first thing you have to do when you're in an epic location is you have to evaluate your setting and you have to choose between one of two options. So either with the setting, you, you can't change the backdrop and where that's located, right? You have your epic view and you know where your client needs to stand to get that epic view. So when your client is in that position, you have to look at the sun and you have to figure out, okay, am I going to be approaching this from a harsh light backlit perspective, or am I going to be approaching this from uh, a direct light perspective, meaning the sun is hitting the very front of your clients. And if you choose direct light or you choose backlit, um, and honestly, I say choose, but you don't really have a choice. You're really just evaluating what is, what is going to happen here. Oh, it's going to be direct light. Okay. Well, if it's direct light, then that's going to affect more than anything. It's going to affect your posing. If the sun is hitting your clients directly and also allowing you for, to perfectly expose the background, that can be really epic, but you have to do a pose that allows for your clients to be evenly exposed. So nuzzle shots where the guy and the girl are really close and he's really close to her face. A lot of times that can be very problematic because the sun is not hitting them directly. And one guy, the guy can be in the shadow and the girl's face can be in the bright sun. What I have found in epic portrait locations where directly light is the reality for me. Um, I try to do poses where they are separated slightly, um, where they're not um, embracing and they don't have their arms or their head, anything too close to block light and cause really intense shadows that I cannot edit out for the life of me. So 
So tip number one is to evaluate, are you working with direct light or are you working with harsh backlighting? Okay, so um, I'll show you an example. Um, this example that you'll see is from Iceland. This was shot in the middle of harsh light um, in the evening, but still very harsh. And you can tell that by their pose, I separated them, we had them walking. So the light, the direct light was hitting them evenly, but also the colors of this are amazing because we were able to expose for the couple and the background evenly. It was the same type of light. But now let's talk about the wedding that I'm gonna show you behind the scenes footage of in a second. This was shot in Colorado where this was middle of the day, super harsh light, epic location, but it was a backlit scenario. And if it's a backlit scenario, then your goal, instead of having your clients somewhat separate and not you know, getting in each other's way when it comes to the direct light, instead you have your clients face towards their shadow somewhat um, in order to protect them from the harsh light. So we don't want that harsh light to affect their skin or their shoulders or their chest. We want to protect them from it. Uh, and so that leads us into point number two. So tip number two is the concept of body blocking. And for all of our students in the KJ Lighting and Location course, you've heard me talk about this many, many times. The idea of body blocking is to use the taller, um, person. So I'm, I'm shooting weddings. So if you have someone by themselves, obviously this is going to be a little bit impossible, but for most wedding photographers, they are photographing two people, whoever is taller uh, and broader shouldered, is going to be facing directly away from the sun and blocking the person, normally the bride, um, from the harsh light, touching their face, their shoulders, their chest, their hair. Um, and so the goal of body blocking, a lot of times I tell my clients, Hey, you can look at each other, but I tell the bride, I want you to move and find to where you can look at them and you don't see harsh sunlight hitting your your face. So it's almost like I'm telling the bride, find the sweet spot, find in between the harsh light hitting your face on either side of his head and kind of position yourself to where you're protected from the light from his body. So body blocking allows me to ensure that the front of the groom, even though the back of him is getting hit by really harsh light, the front of him and the bride, both of them are protected. The front of them that I'm photographing from my angle are protected from really harsh light. And that saves my editing. So it might mean in some situations that your editing process, uh, you might have to overexpose the background just a tad or underexpose the front of them um, just a tad and you can totally fix this in Lightroom now. Okay, so the third and final tip is to pay attention to your position to the sun to avoid lens flare. So a lot of times in situations, even if the sun is not directly above your head, maybe it's starting to set a little bit, but it's still pretty harsh. Sometimes photographers can find themselves in a situation where the couple's right here, I can't move them because I need that epic background, I need them centered with the mountain range. But when you're standing here, you can see the, the sun coming, creeping into your lens and causing a lot of lens flare. And maybe that's your style and that is great. But if you're wanting to get that epic background and you want to be able to capture the, the grand view behind your client, sometimes too much lens flare can make it almost impossible to see that. So those are your three tips and I'm about to show you what this looks like in action at a real wedding day. And so we're going to go to the behind the scenes footage that you've been waiting to see. And I wanna just give you some context. So this was shot about one to 2 p.m. Um, in July in Colorado in an epic location where really when you look at this mountain range, you know like you really should have them centered in between all of these mountain peaks. It, it just makes sense, right? So they are actually what you're going to watch. They're, they're centered right where their ceremony is going to take place. It's beautiful. It's epic. The sun is just slightly behind their heads, enough to be able to use body blocking to block the front of them from that harsh light. He's protecting her from the light. Um, and I'm paying attention to my positioning. So this situation can actually be really challenging. And this clip, this behind the scenes footage, uh, is actually from our KJ All Access membership site where we allow over 3,000 photographers every single month to watch us shoot weddings and engagement sessions behind the scenes. And so they're used to seeing this kind of struggle. They're used to seeing me handle these situations and they actually have access to watch this entire wedding day from beginning to end. And so if you enjoy these few minutes of seeing me shoot behind the scenes in harsh conditions in a unique setting, um, you'd really love being a KJ All Access member and having access to not just this wedding, but to all the weddings that we have shot the last two to three years. So anyway, you'll see me in this wide open field. It's epic. It's bright. It's harsh light. And you'll also um, realize, you know, the light is changing. You know, we didn't talk much about that, but what if you're in this, in this beautiful setup, you have everything just right, but then clouds roll in and then they roll out. There's a lot that goes into shooting and managing light in a wide open harsh light situation with an epic background. And I hope that these few minutes of behind the scenes footage will allow you to see what it looks like to apply the tips that I just taught you in a real life situation.
Um, so I'm shooting like a mad woman because look at that light. Oh my gosh. It's the middle of the afternoon, but it's beautiful. Um, I will be the first to tell you that editing this part of the day and editing all their, I mean, look at that. Oh my gosh. Um, it was so hard to find consistency. I teach a whole course on consistency and people love it. And it was still so tough because the light on them, the light in the background, everything was changing constantly. Your bouquet. Right. <laughs> take your bouquet. I'm not even going to tell you how epic it is. We're just going to take advantage of the whole, <laughs> the whole situation. You guys can look at me and smile. You put a hand in your pocket. Nice. Jet. Nice. Um, so I apologize. The audio is so hard to hear because I'm yelling. And so it's peaking the most that it's peaked all day because I'm outside yelling at them from far away. <laughs> um, but I will explain to you what my goals are. My goal here is to get some traditional portraits. I, the rain really, okay, I need to ask her to move that bouquet back a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Um, the rain really made me realize I, I need to get the epicness first because if another uh, band of um, storm clouds rolls in, I need the shots that I've always dreamed of having since knowing that I booked this wedding. I got to get them right now. And um, so we did take the majority of them um, in this spot, but gosh, why would you move from that spot? Look at that spot. Oh, it's great. So um, another challenge that you may not um, recognize or, or think about when you're shooting in an epic location like this is that your images can very easily, even though there are slight changes in distance changes, lens changes, orientation, pose, um, they can kind of start looking the same because the background is so epic that you notice the background almost first before the couple. Um, so you don't see all the little things that you're changing. You just see, oh, it's another pulled back epic shot. Oh, it's another pulled back epic shot. So the challenge for me throughout this day was to not stay in epic mode, but to do some normal portraits um, of the two of them that were tighter um, and more focused on them and less on the backdrop. That was a very hard balance for me. Underneath of his arm. Yes, for you protect her. All right, Michael, you ready? One, two, and three. Ah, uh, this did not work at all. <laughs> it was a complete fail. Um, poor Michael. I think a lot of times he knows things are failing and he, he wants to be like, Caitlin, give it up. But I keep telling him to try again. So it's not that it was horrible. It, it just, I really should have told him to only pick up like the top layer of her dress, not everything um because it just it fell too fast so the blowing in the wind was beautiful um but also i don't think she she does not have her veil in right i don't think she does so um that is something that we add in a little bit later um and it's not a super long veil so i was just trying to find something that would fly in the wind um but why do you need stuff to fly in the wind when you got a background like that right so we take a few more portraits here uh in the bright light and it's very interesting i want you to pay attention the way it looks right now and then a little bit later when we shoot here it was actually like a really big struggle and I didn't realize until now why it was easier here and, and harder later but the reason it was easier here to edit and to shoot um, then in the later afternoon was because right here they have harsh light hitting kind of the back of their heads um, but the background is not in harsh light. And I think later when we shot here after the ceremony, the background was also in really bright light. And so um, I'm not sure what Emmy's filming. Oh, she was just climbing up. Uh, and so later was actually more difficult. So very, very thankful for this break in the storm and for the fact that we got really good light uh, for, you know, since it was in the middle of the day. It could have been so much worse. So I hope that was helpful for you to see the tips in a real life situation. And if you loved watching me behind the scenes and you felt like, gosh, it's so helpful to see tips actually used in real settings, and you would love being able to watch me do this every single month. Join over 3,000 photographers and get to sit down. You can do it while you're editing. You can do it while you're cooking dinner. We have so many photographers who multitask every month and are learning and growing by simply sitting up an iPad or a laptop or an iPhone and just watching me shoot in real life situations. So um, I don't always shoot in epic locations like elopements in Colorado outside of Aspen. That's not normal. Um, but I shoot everything from super low budget um, country weddings to really high end multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars um, budgeted weddings. I shoot everything across the board and I love that I get to offer that variety of education to our KGL Access students. So if you're wondering if KGL Access is for you, we actually have a free trial where you can watch me shoot an entire wedding day for free. 
learn, grow. It's actually a great wedding where you can learn off camera flash. Um, it was a wedding that we shot in Boston and half the wedding day was after dark. Um, so it's a great wedding to learn from. And if you want to try it out, that free trial link is linked below. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was great to have you tune in. I hope you will tune in for other videos coming in the future.